A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. I hear the whisperings of many, terror on every side. Denounce, let us denounce him. All those who were my friends are on the watch for any misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be trapped. Then we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. But the Lord is with me like a mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble. They will not triumph. In their failure, they will be put to utter shame, to lasting, unforgettable confusion. O Lord of hosts, you who test the just, who probe mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them, for to you I have entrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has rescued the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. Erbum Domini. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. I love you, O Lord, my strength. O Lord, my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. My God, my rock of refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Praised be the Lord, I exclaim, and I am safe from my enemies. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. The breakers of death surged round about me. The destroying floods overwhelmed me. The cords of the netherworld enmeshed me. The snares of death overtook me. In my In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried out to my God. From his temple, he heard my voice, and my cry to him reached his ears. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my Sancti Evangelii secunda millionum. Gloria The Jews picked up rocks to stone Jesus. Jesus answered them, I have shown you my many good works for my Father. For which of these are you trying to stone me? The Jews answered him, We are not stoning you for a good work, but for blasphemy. You, a man, are making yourself God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said you are gods? If it calls them gods to whom the word of God came, and scripture cannot be set aside, can you say that the one whom the Father has consecrated and sent into the world blasphemes because I said, I am the Son of God? If I do not perform my Father's works, do not believe me, but if I perform them, even if you do not believe me, believe the works, so that you may realize and understand 
that the Father is in me and I am in the Father. Then they tried again to arrest him, but he escaped from their power. He went back across the Jordan to the place where John first baptized, and there he remained. Many came to him and said, John performed no sign, but everything John said about this man was true. And many there began to believe in him. Verbum Domini. I'd like to begin this morning by expressing my gratitude to EWTN for the opportunity to celebrate this anniversary mass of the death of Terry Schiavo here in Birmingham. She died 12 years ago on March 31st, so we're celebrating the anniversary of her death today. As you know, she was deprived of nourishment and hydration and is a victim of what we refer to as euthanasia. So I'd like to reflect on, on, on this a bit um, after reflecting on today's scripture readings. Um, with us today is Mary uh, Schindler, uh, Terry's mother, and her brother Bobby and his members of their family. So we're happy that we're able to join them in prayer on this day that's uh, very, very meaningful, especially to them. As you probably know, if you follow the liturgy very closely, uh, most of the season of Lent is focused on the grace of conversion. We ask the Lord to help us to change. You know, we live lives that in so many ways are unfaithful to our baptismal promises, so we come to the Lord in the season of Lent asking Him to help us prepare by His grace for um, the renewal of our baptismal promises at the Easter celebrations. But on the Fridays of Lent, if you notice, there's a, there's a kind of a divergence from that in the direction of Jesus and His sufferings. Uh, today's first reading is from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. And today's gospel, of course, is Jesus' struggle with uh, the authorities in Jerusalem who were opposed to his teaching. The early church saw the prophet Jeremiah as a type of Jesus. You know, the, the church was always looking for a prophecy in the Old Testament about Jesus. And they saw in the, in the preaching and in the suffering and the, the persecution of Jeremiah a foreshadowing of what would happen in the life of Jesus. Um, that's probably the reason why these readings are on the Fridays of Lent. Uh, Jeremiah was a prophet in the 6th century before the birth of Jesus. He was called to preach um, to a resisting uh, Jewish community, especially the leaders of the Jewish community, at, at the time prior to and during the Babylonian captivity. Um, he was rejected by the people. We hear him complaining about that in today's first reading. Um, he was actually, they tried to, to kill him, actually. Um, eventually, the Lord rescued him as he uh, had confidence would happen. But nonetheless, he was a man who suffered primarily because he chose to be faithful to the Word of God and to preach the Word of God, speak the Word of God, um, when the community that he was sent to was resistant to that. In today's uh, gospel, we have the, you know, the, the word prophet means someone who speaks for Jesus, I mean for God. It's not, doesn't mean someone who forecasts the future, but someone who is inspired by God to be God's spokesperson. In today's gospel, we have the example, uh, uh, we have the, the, the reality, rather, of the, the true prophet, who is Jesus, who not only speaks for God, but is God himself. And in this reading, um, he is defending his identity not only his identity as the Son of God, but his identity with the Father, you know? And that is what the community found so distasteful, that he would compare himself or to claim to be somehow participate in the very life and nature of God. We know but from our Christian faith that Jesus is God become one of us, God become man. And later on, we'll hear this on Holy Thursday, later on, uh, Jesus, when speaking to his apostles, told them that he who sees me sees the Father. So Jesus you know, claimed for himself his divine identity. But again, 
there's resistance on the part of the elites of, of his time to the, the preaching of the gospel. So let's talk about the role of prophecy in the church today. Just as Jeremiah and Jesus are prophets of the Father, we are called by our baptism to be the prophets of God in the church today, some to a greater degree than others. But nonetheless, all of us, because of our baptism, are called to be priests, to be kings, be responsible for other people, and to be prophets, to be people who speak for God. And just as there was resistance to the prophecy in the Old Testament and New Testament times, there is resistance to prophecy in our time. The biggest resistor to prophecy is ourselves. You know, we resist the, the penetration of the Word of God into our own lives. And we need to open our eyes to that blindness. But there's also a resistance, and I think a growing resistance, to the Word of God, to the Gospel, in the world in which we live today. Uh, the elites have moved away from the Gospel and uh, find it difficult to hear. And when they hear it, there's that, the same kind of resistance that was experienced by Jeremiah and experienced by Jesus in today's Gospel. One of the directions of the world we find ourselves in today is a rebellion against the order of creation. You know, Adam and Eve rebelled against God. They wanted to be God themselves. They wanted to make the rules, you know, or the reorganize their world after their own mind and heart rather than to be faithful to their identity, the identity that God had given them through creation. And we see in our culture today a, a rebellion against the order of creation. I think most of us, we see that more, most clearly probably in same-sex marriage. You know, it's an inversion of uh, God's plan for the meaning of marriage and the relationship between a man and a woman. Uh, all the talk today about transgenderism, you know, is again rebellion against the order of creation, you know, that uh, we don't have to be how God made us, we can remake ourselves into something else. But we also see rebellion against the order of creation in suicide. You know, that's why the church has always considered it wrong. You know, it's wrong because, of course, it, it is a violation of our human dignity, but it's also wrong because it is a violation of the plan of God. You know, God is the creator. We're the creatures. God is the one who gives life, and God is the one who calls us from life. And to insert ourselves and control that is a rebellion against the plan of God or the order of creation. As we commemorate uh, Terry Schiavo and her terrible suffering and death today, uh, we're reminded that, uh, we, of course, we pray for her and for her family, for their consolation. But we're also uh, celebrating this occasion to remind ourselves that we're called by God to be his spokespersons in our culture and our society about everything. And among the things we're supposed to be his spokespersons about is the dignity of human life and also that we some, somehow embrace with our hearts and our lives and preach faithfully God's plan for creation. That, you know, death is not something we cause. It's something that comes to us and from the hand of God. He brought us alive. He takes life away. So, are you willing to be prophets of God in all those areas? But today we focus on the area of assisted suicide and euthanasia. When the prophet Jeremiah was called by God, he was afraid. He said, I'm too young. And into that fear and into his inexperience, God told him, stand up and act like a man. You know? you know, women are supposed to be strong too, of course. He also said, say what I want you to say and go where I want you to go. And the sign of a true prophet is that that person is willing to accept that invitation from God, to be courageous, to speak clearly, and to go where God sends him, even if the world around us is resistant to the message of God. Um, Bobby Schindler and his family have become uh, God's prophets on this area of euthanasia and suicide in our world today 
And their good example is an inspiration to all of us to take up a responsibility ourselves in our own communities. First of all, in our own lives, but also in the lives of the people in our families, among our friends, and also in our communities to speak loudly. You know, there are many efforts in many states in, in our country today to um, change the law so that people can kill themselves and people can assist others in taking the, their own lives. Or, you know, it eventually always evolves in the direction of euthanasia, which is the taking of someone's life without their asking for assistance. Um, and if we don't stand up and speak the word of God, call people to be faithful to God's plan, uh, who's going to do it? So it's not enough for us to admire the Schindler family or to pray that this cause is somehow understood and then embraced by um, our culture. It's also important for us to have the courage to be God's prophets, being faithful to the grace of our baptism. So as we recall today the Jesus' death on the cross, you know, the, the, the true prophet who speaks fully the word of God, we ask the Lord to incorporate us into that work through the grace of our baptism. We ask the Lord to give us courage so that we might be faithful and thorough proclaimers of the gospel of Jesus Christ in our world today.